Welcome. In this video, let me talk about a problem with square roots. Uh, it really comes from the history of the subject. So to get going on what, what my concerns are, let's first of all look at the notation. We write, for say the square root of 4, we use two symbols. We use this symbol, a little hook shape, and that's called a radix, together with a horizontal bar called a vinculum. So here's the square root of 4, and that's a vinculum. Uh, actually, the vinculum is really important. It groups terms together. It doesn't make much sense right here, but if I want to do something a little more complicated, complicated like the square root of 3 plus 4, I need to have a vinculum there. So I mean I want the 3 and 4 grouped together, so it means the square root of 7, not the square root of 3, and then later on add to that 4. All right, so this is the uh, notation of a square root, but this radix, the part that's really the, the key part here, is actually coming from geometry, because a square root is really a geometry problem. It's the word square there. So what is it? So I'm talking about a square, and when I ask for the square root, I'm, ten, I'm being told its area is 4, and I'm asked, what is the root feature of a square of area 4? That is, what is the side length of a square of area 4? Well, the answer is 2 because 2 times 2 is 4. And that's it. That's the only answer, because in geometry, I'm only allowed to have positive quantities. It is true in arithmetic that negative 2 times negative 2 is also positive 4. But I, if I'm going to use the radix symbol, I'm saying this is a geometric, geometric question. I can only deal with the positive answer. So this is actually square root of 4 in this notation must be positive 2. I'm not allowed to write negative 2, so it has to be positive. So with the use of the radix, positive quantities are it. There's one slight exception, because in geometry, though it's pushing a little bit, I could ask for the square root of 0. What's the side length of a square of area 0? If I draw, it's not much of a square, it's just a dot. Clearly, the side length of a sort of a kind of nominal square is 0 in this case. So positive, with the one exception, I'm going to also allow 0. 0 times 0 does equal 0, and geometrically a little, little strange, but I can hang on to it just. All right, so with this understanding, the radix means positive root. I will not allow myself to consider negative numbers. So if I was to ask, ask for the square root of 9, I must write simply 3, nothing more than that. However, in algebra, if I was asked to compute x, solve x squared equals 9, then indeed there are two answers, because that's not a, a question from geometry anymore. That's a question from algebra. You will see some textbook authors get very confused on this, and they will write in their books, square root of 9 is plus or minus 3. And if, I, if they do that, then all bets are off. They said, I am defying convention and are now allowing negative numbers in my considerations, and then I'm afraid troubles will ensue. Here's one trouble. I'm going to step out of Algebra 2 for the moment and assume we have some familiarity with complex numbers, but I'll come back to Algebra 2 in a moment. If we're going to play the game that negative numbers are now part of the world, the, the considerations, then we're in pickle. Here goes. 1, no doubt, is the square root of 1. Well, I'm out of geometry, apparently, according to this author, so I'm allowed to have negative numbers. So I'm going to say 1 is actually negative 1 times negative 1. And there's the vinculum to help me out. That I mean the square root of that product. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Well, that's the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. I'm out of the world of geometry, so I'm still fair to write this. Most people call this i. As you'll see in another video, I have troubles with this notion of i being the square root of negative 1, but we'll stick with it for the moment. This is i times i, which is negative 1. So it looks like if you're going to play this game on me and take me out of geometry, I've now proven that 1 is equal to negative 1. So my first piece of advice is don't do it. it this issue of uh, deviating from uh, just the positive values does arise in classic Algebra 2 problems. And let me do a very simple example of this. Let's get my pen back. Let's solve 6 equals x plus the square root of x. That is, find a number x such that uh, itself plus its square root equals 6. Uh, let's isolate the square root and rewrite this as 6 minus x equals root x. And now let's square both sides. That gives me a 36 minus 12x plus x squared equals uh, square root of x times square root of x is x. Now things are interesting. Uh, let me just make this a quadratic equation by subtracting x on both sides. So x squared minus 13x plus 36 is 0. 
and I've chosen nice numbers here. This actually factors nicely. I think 9 and 4 are very good numbers for the pro this problem. x minus 4 times x minus 9 is 0, which tells me x is 4 or x is 9. But behold, let's check these. Let's actually put x equals 4 into this equation. 4 plus the square root of 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. Yep, jolly good. 9. 9 plus the square root of 9, 9 plus 3 is not 6. That doesn't work. So what happened here? Why, do we, why are we getting this erroneous solution? Only, only x equals 4 is valid. Well, the problem is my question started with an piece, extra piece of information. Not only do I want to solve this equation, I want to solve it with square roots taken in the geometric sense as a positive quantity. Now, I've taken this problem and turned it into an algebra question where I've lost that statement with a radix in it. That is, I've lost the extra piece that says, keep things in terms of positive roots. So if I've lost information by going to this stage, and hence I've lost information here, I've lost information here, then it's, it's not surprising to me that I could produce answers that don't actually hold for that lost information. That was the case here. If I change this beginning question, sorry my board's getting very messy, to okay I will allow positive or negative roots here, then actually 9 is fine. It would be 9, in this case I have to use negative root x, 9 minus 3 is indeed 6. But I didn't do that. I said keep in the geometric interpretation. So my little point is square roots, any equation involving a radix is kept in the positive realm. If you're going to do algebra on a problem that has a radix involved and remove the radix, you've actually opened yourself up to extra possibilities that you probably weren't accounting for, then one must really check solutions in the end. But my real danger with square roots is actually what I mentioned before in terms of complex numbers. If an author writes this, we're in trouble. So perhaps look at the video on I coming up. Thanks very much.